Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another meal prep video. Yes, I said it, a meal prep video. If you watched my meal prep video last week, if you saw the bloopers at the end, you saw that I kept calling it a meal plan and grocery haul video. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing more kind of like a fall meal prep kind of some fall recipes. The fall weather is here, even here in Florida. We had a little bit of a cold front come through the other day. Didn't stay for very long, but it still got me in the mood for some fall recipes. So on the menu this week, I'm planning on doing apple crisp for breakfast prep. And for lunch prep, I'm planning on doing my award-winning hearty chili. And then I'll also be prepping my DIY dinner kits and also putting our snacks together. So if you wanna see how I meal prep breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks for my husband and I, then stay with me. start by giving the reminder give this video a thumbs up if you like meal prep videos it really does help my channel and I really do appreciate the support if you're new here welcome my name is Christy I'm currently following the WW blue program but I do provide the points for all three programs on my channel and I will also list the recipes so if you're not following WW and you just want to get the nutritional facts then you can get those as well and as I always mention, you don't need to be on any type of weight loss program to get tips and ideas from my channel so I hope you'll hit the subscribe button and also click that notification bell so you know notified anytime I upload new content. So now's the part where I briefly explain how I do my meal preps for those of you who are new. So if you are a regular subscriber of mine and you want to jump past this chapter, then please feel free. So if you're new, I usually meal prep for my husband and I breakfast and lunch for three days each. So I make six breakfasts, six lunches. That way it gives some room to bump something throughout the week. And also I don't like to prep out too far in advance. For my dinner kits, I basically do DIY dinner kits. Basically, I'm just putting all the ingredients into a bag, putting them in my fridge so that way they're all ready. Everything's portioned out and I'm not washing them or anything like that until the night that I have them, but it's just ready portioned out and it helps with portion control. I also occasionally add in some freezer meals to that, which those I actually put into a freezer meal kit. So with that out of the way, let's get started with prep. All right, everyone, so breakfast prep this week is going to be a lightened up apple crisp. I found this recipe on sparkpeople.com, and hopefully you can hear me good. I unplugged my mic because I noticed when my mic is plugged in, I sound really loud, and I'm loud anyway, so <laughs> I unplugged you. So anyway, I found this recipe on sparkpeople.com. I went through and tweaked it. So the recipe that's on the website is using like a little nine by nine pan. So I wanted to make this enough for a 13 by nine. So what I did is increase the ingredients by 50%. So I'm using one, one and a half times the amount, except for the amount of apples. The original recipe just for the little nine by nine calls for three apples, uh, three medium apples. I'm gonna use seven <laughs> large apples. So I want a lot of apple in mine. So for this one, you're gonna need some apples, ground cinnamon, vanilla extract, some flour, unsweetened applesauce. For sweetener, I'm gonna use the Lakanto monk fruit sweetener, and I also am gonna be using the golden. So this is kinda of like the brown sugar one. I need both of those, and that's it. That's all we need for this. Okay, so I'm actually gonna start with the topping first. So in here, I have one and a half cups of quick oats, to that, I'm gonna add about three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon. You could add a whole teaspoon if you wanted. I'm just gonna do a little shy of that. There's gonna be cinnamon in with the apples too. And then I'm gonna add about one and a half to two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And then about three eighths of a cup of the brown sugar. So just shy of half a cup. The other thing I'm using is the recipe calls for two tablespoons of butter, but I'm gonna try and do two tablespoons of unsweetened applesauce in place of the butter. And we're gonna see if that works. Cause that is what's gonna lower the points. So the points on this are three points for blue and green and zero points for purple. So then just stir that up. And it's gonna take a little bit to stir it up because you really need to kind of incorporate the 
applesauce because the applesauce is playing as the butter so normally when you have something like this that you add just a little bit of butter to you really have to take your time and mix it all together so that it kind of really makes that crumb topping all right I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the applesauce it's really starting to bind together pretty good actually but I'm gonna add a little more applesauce Once that's all stirred together, just set that aside. Alright, so now we're going to take our infamous red bowl and I'm going to put three tablespoons of flour in there. And then we want three tablespoons of sugar. And make sure if you're using artificial sweetener, make sure that it is equal one for one. So like the monk fruit sweetener, this is a true one for one. One tablespoon is the same as one tablespoon of sugar. But I know there's some out there that you have to actually use less of the artificial sweetener. And then we want about a, one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. that's all mixed together set that aside now we're gonna cut the apples up so I've already got my I already had my apples washed I'm actually gonna leave the peels on mine so that's completely up to you if you want to leave the peels on or not but I'm gonna leave them on mine apples so now we're just going to add those apples in here and if we have to add a little bit more cinnamon we will we'll see what it looks like my goal obviously was to make the six pretty good portions so now I'm just going to do the best I can you know what would have worked really good well there's a seed there is putting this in a bag like a gallon bag and just shaking it up I think I'm going to do that I think this will work better let me get my bag holder. So, see the whole point of this, I could have done this before, but I know a lot of you really enjoy seeing my red bowl. <laughs> so, I had to get the bowl out. Come on, don't do this to me. Alright, let's see if this is a little easier. Much easier. I think that's probably going to be okay. What I'm going to do... I think it's going to be alright. I just tasted an apple. <laughs> Even though there's flour on it. Alright, let me get this dumped into a pan. Make sure you get every piece out of there. This is my overused pan that I don't want to part with. Alright, now we're going to put the topping on there. Oh my gosh, I'm going to feel like I'm eating dessert for breakfast. I'm going to just spread that around. All right. 
I can't wait to smell this. All right, so that is going, oh my gosh. I'm looking at my camera and I saw this. I thought it was a bug. I was about to flip out. It's an apple seed. Okay, 325 degrees for about 30 minutes just until the apples are soft and the topping is golden brown. I'm curious because with this many apples, it may take just a little bit longer, but we'll see. So 325 and around 30 minutes. All right, look at that. Oh, it looks so good. So it did take a little bit longer than 30 minutes because of how much I put in it. So what I ended up doing is after the 30 minutes, I put it on for about three more minutes and then I decided that it would probably be better to put it up under the broiler because it wasn't really browning too much. So what I did is took some spray butter and just sprayed the top with just regular spray butter and then I put it under the broiler. My broiler has a low and high. I did low for not even five minutes. I mean, you literally have to keep watching it because the, it'll toast up really quick. So it went from like nothing to this real quick. So definitely watch it. That looks really good. So I'm gonna let that cool down before I cut into it. And I still haven't decided if I'm gonna do berries or not with this or do berries for snacks. But I think I am going to portion out some Cool Whip, one point worth of Cool Whip to go with this. And oh, it smells so good. All right, so let me let that cool down some. So I went through and measured out some Cool Whip. I'm using sugar-free Cool Whip. And this kind you can have up to three and a half tablespoons for one point. So I put it in the tracker so that I could weigh it and it came out to 15 grams is one point. So I put 15 grams into each of these cups except for this one I put 45 grams. So this one is for all three. So one will be my husband's and one will be mine. So now I'm just going to go through and cut this into six. <laughs> And hopefully I can get it into each container without it falling apart because it's still it's not like my pancake bakes where you know that's a pancake bake and it can kind of kind of forms I just don't want it to fall apart perfect oh my gosh mmm so good oh we forgot a little piece there all right so I'll just go through and put the rest of these in the containers So then we'll just put these in here and then like I said this one probably my husband will just keep that one or we'll just keep that in the fridge and take it with it so that's it for breakfast so I'll, I still got to decide I think I I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the berries yet I haven't quite decided so that is it for breakfast so now I'm gonna move on to lunch all right so now I'm moving on to lunch for lunch this week we are having my award-winning hearty chili. I actually won first place with this chili at a couple cook-offs, so I love this chili. The way that I make it, it does have a lot of heat to it. It's kind of spicy, so there are definitely some things that you can do to scale back on that so that it's not quite as spicy. So my recipe that I have for this one, you can do it two different ways. You can make it on the stove, which I think I did in a previous video. I do it on the stove and just kind of let it sit for a couple hours or you can do it in the slow cooker. So this week I decided that I was gonna do it in the slow cooker. But I like to start meal prepping usually around one o'clock and I knew that I needed a good like eight hours in the slow cooker. The longer you cook this in the slow cooker, the better the flavor is. So what I did this week is, I made this actually last night. So what I'm gonna do is while I'm portioning it into my containers, I'm gonna put the clip in of last night of me making it so you can watch me make that and then I will come back to you. Let me just mention though that in the video you're gonna see uh, the, not the cannellini beads, the cannellini beads are zero points, but the tomato sauce and the kidney beans have sugar in them. And I didn't realize that they weren't the complete zero point on blue and purple. So those ones do scan with points because of the sugar in them. Personally for me, I'm not gonna count them because I don't eat them enough to really make that much of a difference. And honestly, I've always used that kind in my chili and just never realized that they had sugar in it. So I'm just gonna keep counting it the way that I do. So the 
recipe that I have is intended for the zero point beans and the zero point tomato sauce. So just want to put that out there that if you end up buying those great value brands like I do, like I said, can cannellinis are fine. Those are zero, but the other ones have sugar in them. So just be aware of that. So the other thing that I'm doing with these is I'm going to put in one point worth of light sour cream. You can have just shy of two tablespoons. Two tablespoons is actually 30 grams, but that scans for two points. So if you just have 24 grams, then that's only one point. So I'm going to add that in there. And then during the week, we might also add cheese to it. You can add cheese, avocado, whatever you want to do. So let me put in the clip in of me making it this last night. And in the meantime, I'll portion this out into my containers. All right, so lunch prep. This is lunch this week, hearty chili, and this is two points on blue and purple and four points on green. So the first thing we need on this is 96% extra lean ground beef. We need three pounds of it, and I already have it over here cooking on my stove. The other things we're gonna need for this recipe are a green pepper, a red pepper, an orange pepper. Actually, in my recipe, it says a yellow pepper instead of red, but I didn't have any yellow, so I'm using green, red, and orange. Uh, also an onion, about four tablespoons of chili powder. This is just the way I like it, so you can you know, do things different. We like a lot of heat with ours, so I do four tablespoons of chili powder. I also do about two tablespoons of hot sauce as well. And instead of regular diced tomatoes, I use the Rotel diced tomatoes with green chili. So if you don't like a lot of heat, you could just use regular diced tomatoes in yours. So I'm using two cans of those. I'm using a can of dark red kidney beans and a can of light red kidney beans, two cans of cannellini beans. I use about a cup of tomato sauce and then a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. I also use about a teaspoon each of salt and pepper, about three tablespoons of minced garlic, and about three tablespoons of Worcestershire. All right, so when I make chili, usually I do it on the stove and I just slow cook it on the stove for a couple hours. I usually add in the burger and then all the spices and everything, but I'm gonna do it in my slow cooker. So when I do it in my slow cooker, I just dump everything in there. I don't, the only thing I do, I cook the burger and then everything else I just mix together. So I just sprayed my slow cooker with uh, some cooking spray and now I'm just gonna dump everything in there, so the tomatoes and diced chilies, and I do not drain anything. I just pour it right in there the way it is. And hopefully I'm gonna get everything to fit in the slow cooker. We like a lot of beans in ours, so if you don't like this many beans, you don't have to use this many. Do about a cup of tomato sauce, about four tablespoons of the chili powder, three tablespoons of Worcestershire. Three tablespoons of minced garlic. I just realized you're really close. <laughs> I have the camera really close up. I hope, I hope it's not too close. Then I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of salt and pepper, which I just kinda eyeball. And the salt and pepper, I just do that to taste at the end. So now I'm gonna set that aside. So now all I have left to do is cut up my onion and pepper. So also with the burger, I use the 96% extra lean, but if you don't have that, you can use regular burger and just rinse it. All right, now I'm gonna use my little chopper here, and I just have a, it's called a Chef's Rival. I don't know if you can see. It's a Chef's Rival Ultimate Chopping and Mixing Machine. My mother-in-law actually got this for me years ago, and I absolutely love it. So I like to use it when I'm chopping up a lot of stuff like this for chili. And then put the top on there. And this is a manual. It's not there. I think they have electric ones, but I actually like the manual one. What? 
And then you just have to be careful because it likes to come out the opening, so you kind of have to shake it up. And if you wanted to, you could throw your onions and peppers in with your burger just to kind of get the flavor in there. I sometimes do that, but I'm not going to today. So that one's kind of big. So I'm going to chop it up a little more. So that's how I want them in my chili. I like them really, really mint, almost mint. So I'm just gonna plop those in the chili. And get the rest of them cut up. And that's a lot of onions and peppers. So, like I said, if you don't like the heat, back off some of the peppers, back off the di put diced tomatoes instead. So, completely optional. Chili is just one of those things you got to do it to your liking. All right, now I'm just going to mix that all in there. I was worried this wasn't going to fit, but I think it's going to, just barely. And so you can see the consistency. So, see, I don't like the great big chunks of onions and peppers in there. I like them minced like that. Now my burger is done, I'm going to add that in there because there's really nothing to rinse. <laughs> I don't have to drain it because it's the extra lean. And then just mix that up in there. And then this is where if you wanted it, if you wanted to add more tomato sauce you could. Since I'm doing it this way, I'm going to let it cook and if I need to add some more sauce I will. It's pretty thick so I might add just a little bit more sauce. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and add more now. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Oh. Fall is here, my friends. Okay, so the last thing, hot sauce. So I'm using some Frank's Red Hot. So I usually do about two tablespoons, but what I'm going to do is do a tablespoon now and then I will add more in when it's done. And I'll just add it to our liking. So this is gonna go on low for six to eight hours. You could also do it on high for four, about four hours because it's, the meat's already cooked and everything. There's nothing that needs to cook. For me, personally for me, the, the slower it cooks, the better the flavor. So this is one of those things that has a lot better flavor actually the next day. So that's why this is gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna put mine in the slow cooker now. It's going on low for about six to eight hours. All right, everyone, so this is what it looks like after it's done and portioned out. I did decide to go ahead and have two portions. So I have two cups in each container. So this for me on blue, so on blue and purple, this is going to be a five point lunch. And if you're on green, then it's going to be nine points. It'll be eight. It's four points for one cup of the chili. So if you have two, then it's eight points. And then plus the one point for the sour cream. And also, I did end up adding even more chili powder and more of the red hot. So what I recommend that you do with the hot sauce and the chili powder is just wait because the longer that it sits and incorporates all the seasonings, then sometimes the hotter it gets. So you definitely don't want to overdo it in the beginning. Always wait. But like I said, we do like quite a bit of spice with ours, so I ended up adding more to mine. We actually kept some of this aside for lunch for today, and now I have some to go in my freezer. I just put it in a freezer bag. I use regular freezer bags when I do freezer meals because it's just a lot easier rather than the reusable one. So I just mark it with the date and what it is and I just put fully cooked meaning that I've already cooked it. It's not like I've prepped it ahead and have to still put it in the, in the slow cooker. So we'll just pull this out and this can be a meal somewhere down the road. So that's my lunch so now I'm going to move on to dinners. All right, so now we're moving on to dinners, but before I get going with dinners, I figured I would get my blueberries and raspberries soaking. So I used my OXO salad spinner. I just put some water in it. 
I put about four parts of water to one part vinegar. And that just kind of gets the bacteria off. So while I'm doing my dinners, I'm gonna let these sit in the vinegar water. For my dinners this week, I do have a little bit different because I'm gonna be doing two just regular dinner kits, but I'm also gonna be doing a freezer meal as well. So let me get these ones out of the way. So the first night I'm doing basil parmesan salmon with rice, asparagus, and broccoli. The rice I use is just the 90 second ready rice. So I'm just gonna put the broccoli. And actually, yeah, I am gonna do both. I wasn't sure if I was gonna just do asparagus or broccoli too, but I'm gonna do both. And for the asparagus, I'm gonna cut the ends off. And I'll just leave that on there. Put that in there. And then I have my topping for the salmon, which is three tablespoons of light mayonnaise, two tablespoons of Parmesan, and then about a tablespoon of basil leaves. I just use the dried basil leaves. And then I also sprinkle a little bit more Parmesan at the end. I actually have quite a bit of broccoli in there, I think. And then my salmon goes in. And the topping and salmon, this is actually enough for three. So normally when I do my dinner kits, it's just two portions for my husband and I. But for salmon, I always make three portions. Um, my dogs like salmon, so they usually get salmon on salmon night. Okay, so that's it for that one. All right, the next one I'm gonna do is roasted turkey with ranch cauliflower and mashed potatoes. So the mashed potatoes that I use for this one are the Idahoan. So basically these are my sides. For the salmon, I just use this 90 second ready rice, so that's why I don't put that in the bag. And then for this one, I'm just gonna use these baby reds, Idahoan baby reds. These are four points for a serving, which is like half a cup. So if you're on purple and you, you choose to use regular potatoes, then that will lower your points. But the, otherwise it's four points for those. So for this one, for the entire dinner, I have six points for blue, six points for purple, and seven points for green. But like I said, if you're purple and you just use regular potatoes or brown rice or something, that will lower your points. And the same with the basil parmesan. So I put the points for everything in the kit, including the rice. So if you're on purple and you use brown rice, then that's gonna lower your points to two. So for this one, I'm having uh, oven roasted turkey that is from Aldi, and it's actually, these turkey breast portions, which are basically already pre-cooked. So I'm gonna just put this whole thing in there. This is actually quite a bit. It's uh, one and a half pounds. So obviously my husband and I are not gonna eat one and a half pounds of turkey for dinner. But what I'm doing is for lunch, the last two days of the week, we're planning on doing turkey and cheese wraps. So I'm just gonna cut some up and put, use them in the wraps. So all I'm gonna do is cut up the cauliflower. And also, I've had quite a few suggestions, and I always forget to do it, on my vegetable scraps, that I can be saving those and putting them in the freezer for a broth. And actually, I have a bunch in there that I keep forgetting about, so I need to make a vegetable broth or a chicken broth or something very soon. Uh, but that's why I haven't been putting a lot of them in there. I always, honestly, I forget about it, and I end up with way too much in there. So that's it for that and then I'm gonna put my ranch seasoning together this is just oh my gosh I got a mess here so for this I have one teaspoon of the Hidden Valley Ranch seasoning and I'm gonna add two ounces of light sour cream and then my husband and I will split this we just roast the cauliflower and put this over the top of it And then the turkey goes in and that's it for that one so again that's one that you really don't need to make into a kit but it does save a little bit of time I've already got the cauliflower all chopped up and I've got my topping together for it so that's it that for that one this one I'm actually gonna put into a freezer meal this is honey mustard pork chops with red potatoes and green beans so for this one I'm actually gonna put everything in the kit it's gonna be a freezer meal and I'm gonna just, it's gonna be like a dump and go the day we have it. The other night that I'm planning on for dinner, we're doing sheet pan kielbasa bowls. So this one was supposed to be Tuesday night, 
And the sheet pan kielbasa bowls were supposed to be, I think, Wednesday. So this one was supposed to be Tuesday night, and sheet pan kielbasa bowls were supposed to be Thursday night. What I'm going to do, I'm going to be working from home too, so I actually have a little bit of time because I save on my drive home. So I'm going to make the sheet pan kielbasa bowls that night because it's easier. I don't want to cut up all the vegetables and everything today. And then I'm going to put this in my freezer, and I will pull it out of my freezer Wednesday night, and we will have this Thursday. So I'll dump it in my slow cooker on Thursday. So for this one, I'm going to use some green beans, and I've got these fresh green beans. I'm just going to try to cut the ends off with some of them. And I'm going to use probably about around 8 ounces of beans and 8 ounces of potatoes. Now, one thing that's different with doing freezer meals as opposed to my regular dinner kits is that you do have to wash the produce because you're gonna literally be dumping the bag into your crock pot. So you need to, whereas with my dinner kits, I'm just, I wash everything that night before I make the dinner. But for these, we gotta wash them. So I guess I'm gonna use a little bit more than eight ounces of green beans. And then I have eight ounces of baby red potatoes. So let me get these washed and then I'll get them in my bag. So what I did is, as you remember, I had my berries in here. Ooh, I'm getting water all over. So I pulled the berries out, rinsed those off real good, and they are sitting on paper towels on my counter. And then I used this to wash the beans and potatoes. Okay, once those are in there, my bag doesn't want to stay on here. Then I'm going to add some onion powder, some garlic powder, that's not even open yet, and some salt and pepper. Now if you wanted to, you could put the salt and pepper right on your pork chop, sometimes I do that. The other thing I'm going to add is one third of a cup of this Jehu sugar free honey mustard. Just pour that right in there. And you can experiment with different things. You might not like the honey mustard on there, but there's different things you can make. You can do, uh, you could do like a ranch sauce, whatever you want. The next thing I'm going to do is take my pork chops and put those in there. And it calls for two five ounce pork chops, but these pork chops are pretty small, so I actually have four of them in there. It was a little bit over 10, not pounds. I weighed them out and they were like, it was like 11 ounces for the four of them, so that'll be all right. I'll just add an extra point. So now mix everything all up. Just try to get everything coated real good. And the other thing that's gonna go in this is a half a cup of chicken broth. But we're not going to do that until the day that it's made. So what I did was wrote on the bag the instructions. So I'll put it in my freezer and then I'll just pull it out. And the instructions are on there. Thaw overnight in fridge, dump in slow cooker, add half a cup of chicken broth, and cook on low eight hours. So the chicken broth gets added after. And what I try to do is when I dump it into my slow cooker, I try to dump it and put the meat on top. So just kind of rearrange it in there. All right, now what I'm gonna do is just try to push as much air out as I can. And that's it. So this is one of those freezer meals that you can make ahead of time, keep in your freezer for up to three months. What I recommend is putting the date up here so that you can make sure that you do make it, you know, before that three months. I have made it longer than that, but they say not. They say three months is pretty much it. For this one, for everything in the kit, it's 10 points on blue, 7 points on purple, and 10 points on green. So that's it for my dinner. So now let me let me do a little bit of cleanup and let me see what I've got to do for snacks this week. Okay, so there is nothing to do for snacks this week. I was thinking I had a cantaloupe to cut up, but I forgot I never bought one. So I have apples and oranges. I have our puddings. I'm going to do the berries uh, with the breakfast. So I'm just going to put those in with the breakfast and then that will be it. The other thing I did real quick is for breakfast one morning, I'm having my fiber one cereal. So I just weighed this out. I have 40 grams in, 45 grams in here for two points. And I have a half a cup of unsweetened almond milk. So I will just take that 
to work with me just like that and I'll have that there. So let me put everything out and I'll show you what the breakfast looks like with the fruit and go over the points with you. All right, look at all this this week. So let's start down here. I actually ended up doing fruit <laughs> in the breakfast, but still had plenty for snack. So we have lots of fruit for snacks and I have my cereal over here, uh, two points for the fiber one cereal and a half a cup of unsweetened almond milk for zero. And then I have in here two point puddings. I have mandarin oranges and also apples, which I probably won't be eating any more apples since I'll be eating the apples in the breakfast. So those will, I'll just save for next week. So here's the breakfast. And if you watched my meal plan and grocery haul video, you would have remembered that I said I was gonna put a yogurt with these. I don't know if I'm gonna end up eating a yogurt with this. So for the apple crisp, three points on blue and green, zero points on purple, one point for the whipped cream, zero for the berries. And then if we end up having a yogurt with it, I have these two point Dan and Light and Fit Greek yogurts. This is the strawberry cheesecake kind. This is really good. So these are two points each. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be eating the yogurt. I feel like right here is what gonna, is gonna be my breakfast. And in that case for blue, it's gonna be a four point breakfast. For green, it would be four points. And for purple, it would be one. So the yogurt, not sure about that one. So that's breakfast. And then for lunch, I have my chili and two points for each portion. So on blue, it's gonna be four points. Plus I have a point worth of sour cream. So on blue and purple, it's gonna be a five point lunch. And on green, it would be a nine point lunch. Again, I have two cups in each container. And then for my dinners this week, uh, I did end up with extra chili. So I won't be having that this week, but just wanted to show it because it is something that was prepped this weekend. So I'm gonna have the honey mustard pork chops. This is going in my freezer with red potatoes and green beans. And the points on that for the whole kit is 10 on blue and green and seven points on purple. Then the basil parmesan salmon with rice, asparagus, and broccoli, five points on blue, five points on purple, and seven to 10 on green, depends on the salmon that you use and how much you use of it. And that's for everything in the kit. And then the roasted turkey with mashed potatoes or ranch cauliflower, that's six points on blue and purple and seven points on green. All right, everyone, I would call that a pretty successful meal prep. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Put any comments down below. And as always, all the recipes will be linked down in the description box, as well as any items that I use. So I'll have direct links to Amazon for my reusable bags, my scale, things like that. So thank you all so much for watching. If you're new, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. I'll talk to y'all in my next video. I'm Christy and I'm planning us healthy. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. The other day, uh, so the weather, oh gosh, peace. So if, in today's video, I'm gonna be doing, and as I also, oh my gosh. And as I, I, I cannot speak today, take 225. I don't know why my camera seems so crooked today. So I put it, so I put it on last night, and then I'm gonna. Do the laundry with Papa? Oh my gosh, every time. Like literally. When you watch my videos, every time I start talking to the camera, camera, there you are walking in. All right, and once that's all stirred together, just set that aside. What she says to me is so it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm gonna eat this one. You're lunch. ridiculous. Huh? I said you're ridiculous.